Welcome back everybody. Today this is another podcast. So what do you know about Star Maid, the podcast, episode seven? I'm joined by I don't know anything. I'm joined by General Von Doom. And uh, we're going to be looking at atmosphere options, turret limitations, player equipment, and planet interaction from space. So, um, let's get started. Yeah, um, atmosphere options. So, this is for when you're on a planet. So, we're talking about the visuals, sounds, status effects, and weather, possibly. Um, what, what are your thoughts, General? My first thoughts, weather would be absolutely cool. Yep. Please add rain and uh, make it rain lava or something, or acid. Yeah. That would be that would be a nice twist to going onto Ooh. planets because it would be like hazardous. Procedural, yeah, so it wouldn't it'll, necessarily it'll... be water. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Might be fire, <laughs> you know. I'd love yeah. that, a firestorm. Oh, God, get... and then you'd have to build a little cover hut somewhere. You know, it wouldn't just be a case of oh look another planet doop 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 doop. You know, <laughs> it would be a bit like Starbound, but a bit more extreme, I think. Yeah, and I suppose you could do it all with similar to the to the debris, I guess. So, you know, you could turn it down if you had a low system or off completely, and you'd just get a little status thing saying you're being rained on right now. If you turned oh, it God, off. Oh God, I see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And like, I really like that. That's an interesting twist. So that goes into status effects, actually. So, I mean, it'd be interesting if on certain planets you actually had, I think, is this the case already? Does the gravity change on different planet biomes? I'm uh, not sure, to be honest. Hmm. I haven't noticed anything. <laughs> I'm not 100%. It's been a while. But I'm thinking, um, you know, if you were on a barren planet, then maybe it should have less gravity. I don't know. It's probably like, or, or whatever the science is, match up the science, you know. Um, mm. um, and then as for visuals and sounds, it'd be nice to have the sound of wind blowing or something as an option when you're on a planet, if it's supposed to have an atmosphere. Even if it was just like you had three different types of loop and they different, they just played depending on the biome, you know. As long as they're not annoying, because uh, on <laughs> Minecraft there is a mod where if you're high enough there will be wind and it is pretty annoying. You have to turn off the entire game. So. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't really care anyway because I don't play. I don't play Star Made with sounds because the Nor weapons do are I. just too damn loud. Yeah, but then if all of that was changed, because I know they're going to update the sound for the game eventually. They just haven't got mm. round to it. Well, if they changed the, all the sounds to not be as loud as they are now, then yeah, it would be great if there was uh, some sort of wind sounds or perhaps thunder if there was mm. uh, lightning going on. I'm thinking as well, maybe the gravity um, radius needs to be larger now that the planets have changed, along with the atmosphere needs mm. to be further away from the planet's surface. Because if, yeah, if you stand on the edge of plates, you can almost jump out of the atmosphere. You know, it gets really thin. It's it's okay when you're over the middle. You know, if you're in the middle of a plate, it's fine. But if you're on the corner... To be honest, half the time I don't even see the atmosphere, if you noticed. But it, it's what makes the ship disappear. Because, you know, if, mm. if the atmosphere was larger, you could have a ship ha hanging in low orbit. But at the moment, if you want to get your ship that close, even if it's really small, it'll get sucked into gravity. And even if that, you know, even if if it was the thing that you had to go further away because you had more gravity, um, I still think it would be nice to have a bigger atmosphere shell. That would be a thing. So if your ship is in low atmosphere and the uh, place did have some sort of like acid rain, then the rain should wear wear out your ship as like, well. Oh, damage wow. the blocks. So you'd get yeah. So you'd get an acid. So in fact, like atmospheric effects could weather your ship. So, it would damage it effectively, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be like this when you're sitting inside a star in Star Made. Hmm. And that even brings in the idea of like an uh, like an asteroid, you know, crashing into the planet, maybe, because we already know what that looks like after your last video. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I mean, obviously you using a ship, but I could imagine an asteroid hitting would be pretty impressive. Now, I really want to film that. 
<laughs> but okay, so we've talked about visuals and sounds, status effects. What other status effects can we think of for atmosphere options? Um you're in a suit, so you can't really get supercharged by some funky air or anything. Poison, maybe, in uh, some kind of gas in the caves, maybe. Eats at hmm. your suit or something. I would like well, to see heat damage near lava. That Yeah, I was about to go onto lava, saying that uh, does, I think uh, lava does emit a bit of toxic gas, to be honest. So if you're not wearing your space helmet and you try to breathe that in, you could actually be poisoned or something. Yeah, they did say that something will come in, a mechanic for the helmet, so maybe that'll be part of that. Hmm. Okay, well, um, we're going to move on Data to the... effect. You're a suffocating. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> we're going to move straight on to the turret limitation section, so... This is all about turning speed on turrets. Um, oh, dear. Yeah, the idea is that they shouldn't just auto-aim immediately. They should be, if they're small, then yeah, because there's not much mass, so they can just turn. But, you know, the, the the basic thought is, the longer the dimension is on your turret, the slower the turn speed should be as they try to track their target. So effectively, it's introducing tracking in a form, but through a cap on turning speed that's maybe relevant to the size of the turret. Definitely, actually. I think that would actually be a pretty good mechanic, because if you think about it in real life, you got a massive-ass cannon on top of your battleship, right? Yeah. It's not going to instantly turn 9 degrees to the left, is it? No. It's going to take its time turning, yeah. and then you've got to aim it, so... And it gives I small think... ships a chance as well, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't have these massively long rods of cannons just instantly turning onto freaking fighters. Mm. That's not what they're meant for anyway. No. They're not meant to target small fighters. They're meant to target like massive dreadnoughts or something and take them out. Yeah. Or planetary bombardment. Yeah. So it would actually give smaller turrets a bit of relevance, you know? Mm-hmm. It, you'd actually have a reason to have big and small turrets for different jobs. And it would be nice if they set it in the AI so if you got a large turret you can set it to a certain role with a turret. Right. So the ships of a certain mass or whatever they don't target. Yeah. Oh, something else which we shan't shan't forget to mention is the axis lock options. So maybe when you push R on your turrets, yeah, on the, you know, or something, there should be an option somewhere so you could basically lock maybe X and Y, just the X or X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? So like to stop them from tipping up and down so you've got turrets that only go side and side or up and down only do you know what I mean when they're on the side if you see what I mean yeah that would actually allow you to make fixed turret locations like yeah. if you wanted some broadside cannons they wouldn't actually be t uh, aiming at ships that are actually on the other side of the ship and basically turning all the way inside that would be pretty stupid to be honest yeah, and it also and that's makes how it them, is right now. They look less derpy as well, because when they look okay, when you design something, it'll look okay turning side to side, but as soon as it tries to aim up, like you say, it's sticking through the ship and all kinds of stuff, which is yeah, fine. Yeah, it breaks your immersion. It just, yeah, it does break the immersion a little bit, especially if people exploit that, you know, by making something that would never work, and then they fit it, and it works, because it just clips through the ship. <laughs> yeah. I've been guilty of it. So. I have as well, to be honest. Mm. Well, with other people, like, stacking freaking ships upon ships on turret docking units. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and basically having them clip through the entire ship yeah. as massive turrets. So, that would be nice to get rid of, to be honest. Another option for turrets is obviously they tie in the turning with the new thrust mechanic somehow, and we don't have any information about that. All we know is that it might affect turning mechanics. <laughs> And so if it does, maybe you'd have to actually think about how you put the thrusters on your turret. So it would actually make design of the turret a little bit more interesting. Because you could craft it to turn faster or not. And obviously that would take up space, which is a choice in design. It could also change the amount of accuracy it has. So if it's turning quickly, it has less time to actually stabilize itself. Mm. And it will be less accurate, maybe. Because if you're firing projectiles, if you're not completely still, you got a bit of energy in, in the actual 
you know, barrels and that. It's going to actually make your uh, projectiles less accurate. They're not going to go where you want it. And also, I think when you think about it, that could be a little bit better because at the moment you can set up the config so turrets have 100% accuracy at the maximum range that the weapon will work at which basically means that, you know, they don't miss, <laughs> you know. So having that element of chaos in the mix might actually meter the, uh, meter the destruction a little bit and give people a chance. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to the next section, which is player equipment. So I'm not going to read them out. Spoilers. I'm just going to go through. So... First thing on the list, I have to say it, people will say I'm biased. Jetpacks or rocket boots? I like rocket boots. But Hell jet, yeah. But jetpacks, yeah, exactly, jetpacks. So some kind of time-limited fuel, whatever, maybe it could use the energy that you have in your suit, and then you have to upgrade your suit if you want the pack to run for longer, you know? So opening up even more uh, meta items that could be introduced. Yeah, this could actually encourage space jumps, to be honest. Like, mm. you got to repair something on the exterior of your ship. You need mm. to get out of there. You need to equip your jetpack or rocket boots or whatever. Mm. And then you're going to have to do, like, large jumps across your ship mm. using the rocket boots, you know? Yeah. Or perhaps you're going to do a boarding mission on another ship. A so... wreck, yeah. There's, no, yeah. there's no gravity units on the wreck because the power's down, maybe. And you need to get to it anyway. You're not, you not. You can't just get. You can't just um, fly about through space without any sort of propulsion system on you. That doesn't work. No. So having sort of jetpack or rocket boots would add a bit of realism to the game, to be honest. And it would be a pretty fun mechanic. It would make it feel like I'm actually in space, to be honest. Uh, we should probably move on now to another item. <laughs> so the next one is the tricorder, trademark, or the scanner. So, you know, something to scan for life forms. Oh, or, 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 you know, like the stuff in the ground. Or. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, Flight Explorers has a mechanic like that. It's interesting, isn't it, that these yeah. other games that we look at have these ideas, and they're pretty cool, and we think, that's that's pretty cool, you know? Like, maybe not a full-on 3D... Freaking, I was really impressed. Like, but anyway, moving on. Yeah, the, the, the idea that you've got a handheld thing and you can just, you know, you can just use it, basically, to, to find all locations. Even if it just gives you, like, a rating. That's how they do it in some of the mods for Minecraft. It'll just go, there's a value of 80 below you, you know? Yeah, I, every time I saw that, I was like... What does this even mean? Yeah, well, a is high number... Is there diamonds down there or just a lot of rocks? I guess a high number means there's gold, iron, diamonds, maybe. If it's a, is it, if it's a really high number, then you know that there's something down there, you know what I mean? Mm. Something of value is down there. Whether it's what you're looking for or not, you don't necessarily know. But um, you look at games like Aliens and that little motion detector blipper thingy, because we're going to get critters on the planets eventually. That would actually be pretty scary if you had like a motion detector and it would go beep, beep, Yeah, beep, and it would just beep, beep it would just beep more beep. as they're getting yeah. closer. That would be amazing and it's such a simple mechanic and you don't have to completely lampoon aliens. It could just be like you say, an audible beep. And if people don't like the beep, they can mod the sound <laughs> for a different beep. <laughs> yeah. Nyan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Someone's going to make it, though. The Nyan Cat remix. Out. Yeah, wait until there is proper sound support and people know how to do it, and they'll mod the hell out of the sound packs for, for That'll that. That'll be one of the first things someone does, put everything as Nyan Cat. Mm -hmm. My Nyan cannons will be unbelievable. Anyway, <laughs> so the next one is pretty obvious, med packs. So you can give yourself HP or stims, you know, little injections mm. of pills or... Could have, like, boosts with stims, Boosters, yeah, yeah. Like, extra health, extra stamina if there was such a thing. 
<laughs> yeah, that goes into the next one as well. Actually, with cooking equipment, uh, you got like you could have a campfire or a fusion pit if you want to be all tech, so that you can cook things. You know, maybe you can get your stims and cook them up with mushrooms, and maybe it'll make you run faster. Mm, or it might kill you. Or it might kill you. You'll just have to find out. <laughs> um, it would actually add a bit of sense of discovery to the game, then. To be honest. Yeah, because you'd have to go and find stuff and see what these combinations do. I think that the combination system with the weapons opens up a whole avenue of... You could combine other things in the game, you know? Mm. Yeah, so... But, um, but, yeah, so that's that. Also, droids or pets. So maybe you've got a slave critter, you know? Or maybe you've got a little robot that follows you around, like a, like a cambot. Maybe you've got a cambot pet. <laughs> Well, I don't want little critters following me about because they'll start chewing at my space core. But a, a little droid following me about that could actually perhaps uh, conduct repairs, maybe, to my ship when it's damaged. That'd be cool. Like, like slow little um, do-it-yourself repairs, you know. Or maybe even if it just beeped when there was a player nearby. <laughs> yeah. Gives you well, a you warning. Have, or you could dispense food. Yeah, you could have all kinds of functions. Maybe it is literally a toaster on wheels, mm. and 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 it toasts. It would be cool if you could actually customize your droid pet. Yeah. Like make it out of different items. Mm. Or add like different parts to your droid pet, and they they would have different functions to it. But mm. there would be a, probably a limitation of one function per droid. Hmm. Well, it opens up all kinds of possibilities, so that's for sure. And then the last one, which I think is actually going to be quite popular, is maps for planets or some kind of PDA. He's already got the thing on his wrist. I'm thinking, like, some kind of thing like they have in other voxel games. So just a top-down view so you could see where maybe other players were on the map, you know? Yeah, it could actually be like colorful as well so it would show all the blocks on the ground like in some mods on a minecraft for instance mm -hmm. you'd actually be able to see like a square gray icon on the map and that, that was actually a building someone's built mm. so it'll be great for getting around to be honest if you're like exploring a large city yeah for instance or if you're inside someone's spaceship i know this is for planets but you could go the uh Mm. bit further and say you could use it on spaceships as well oh. and it would map out what corridor you're on uh, that's interesting so if it didn't go up and down too much it might be able to map that as well that's interesting because that's the problem making it three-dimensional you can't just have a top down because you'd just see the top wouldn't you for a planet it would work but with a ship well, you'd probably it would have show to have the, some uh, levels it would show the block layer of what you're standing on ah Okay. So that would actually show the pathway, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah. That's how they do it on other maps, I think. Yeah, and you just have something really obvious to mark a Plex store and you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to skip the work in progress corner today because we haven't got anybody with us. Still um, working on the same thing. Still working on the same <laughs> thing as well, me, so... Um, but the last thing is planetary interaction from space. So if you're in your ship, you got your planet, um, could you have a beam to scan for resources? Or could we, like, send a probe that'll land on the planet and send back information? Just like a little... Like it would send you an email using the F4 system. Maybe a well, probe could just mail you back. There's a lot of things that I could come up with here, like, hmm. for instance, you could have, like, planetary satellites, for instance, relaying information from perhaps someone's base, yeah. sending some sort of secret message, SOS or whatever, yeah. through the satellite relay to um, their fleet's ships. Hmm. <laughs> you, you could come up with a lot of meta here, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Probes landing on the planet and actually scanning it for resources, perhaps, would actually be pretty cool. Mm. Or you're scouting out someone's base and you don't want to get too close. Even if they were completely non-physical and you didn't craft them and it was just a little glowy thing that went out, spun around a bit and came back. You know what I mean? And it, it, mm. and it was literally like you had a probe launcher block and you click on it. Off it goes. 
And it'd look a bit like a missile, but it wouldn't actually do any mis damage. You know? And, it, and it's um, information it sends back could be limited to like a small area. Yeah. So it doesn't tell you the entire thing about the planet, the entire planet. It will just tell you, this part of the planet has such and such resources. Yeah, and then you know that if you at least land there, you got a good start. Hmm. Mm. People would end well, up using know them like the boomerangs. That planet has. They'd be going around pr probing. They'd be probing around the planet for ages. <laughs> be like, ah, we found a good place. We'll land there. But then that's the whole thing, you know, giving people more of a just this place looks pretty, I'll land here, you know, mm. give them a reason to actually land somewhere. I mean, with the oars glowing, you should have a rough idea, but this would make it even more sort of in depth. Uh, yeah. So, well, is there anything else we want to cover on that? I think that's pretty much the end of that. Don't want to take it too long, do we? No. So we're going forever. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Um, we'll be back. So thanks again, and thanks for listening as well on SoundCloud. And like I say, uh, we'll see you all next time.